Good evening. We welcome you to another episode of your favorite talk show, Stephen Korean Perspectives. I'm Stephen Alexander. And I'm your host, Korean Harris. In today's episode, we have After Breast Cancer Program Coordinator, Angela P. Kelko, here to talk about the ABC program and how ABC has impacted breast cancer survivors. We will also have Tammy Thrash, who is a two-time cancer survivor and pink ribbon trainer for ABC, here to tell us her story and how she went through the process of breast cancer. Yes, in today's topic, Korea and I will discuss the comedy film Night School, topping the weekend box office, and the more behind the movie. So guys, stay with us, kick back and relax. You're in for a great show. It's, it's SKP, SKP time. time. Universal's Night School topped the box office this weekend for the second weekend in a row. The comedy which stars Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish made a respectable $28 million between Friday and Sunday. In second place was Warner Brothers animated feature Smallfoot. It took in just over $23 million right in line with the studio expectations. Universal Studios also made the movie the number one, what's it? What's it? Three? Third spot. Third spot, yeah. yeah. So. It was the movie In the House, that's what it's called. <laughs> it made $12.5 million in its second weekend of release. Let's take a look at the film of Night School. Are you trying to get your GED? Oh! Are you trying to get your GED? Yes. yes. You can get out of my way. <laughs> my suspicions were correct. <laughs> Boom. You're clinically dumb. There is no cure for what you have. Oh my God! I got learning herpes. I got the gift that keep on giving. Boy, you did the black voice thing with him. It's not a black voice. Not a black voice. You don't remember when you was in that meeting? You was like, "We gonna get it lit up in here." This meeting lit. It was very lit. I keep it one hundred. When have I ever not kept it one hundred? Mm. <laughs> Like this fry. is the grill for you. I call it the Obama. Como te llamas, me llamo the Pitbull. I call this the big black machine. <laughs> Lisa, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh my God. Do you smell gas? A little bit. Came out, but I was nervous. That's just a quick okay, one. Okay, um, no, that's, um. <laughs> Steven, what are your thoughts about the film? I enjoyed the film, honestly. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did, personally, because I felt that it just wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't expecting what I was expecting. You didn't even want to go at I first. I didn't want to go, but it has so many moral <laughs> stories did. behind it. And three points that I wrote down is, always be true to yourself. Okay, explain it. What did, how did you get that from the movie? Because. In the movie, Kevin Hart, I don't want to spill too much just for those who are watching that haven't seen it yet, but Kevin Hart was just kind of, he was dishonest to his girlfriend, honestly, because he wanted to go, he had to go back to night school to get an education so he mm -hmm. can pursue a job that he wanted to be in. However, he lied to his girlfriend, you know, to keep this persona up of being this big macho guy and, you know, I don't know, he just lied. And so he wasn't true to himself. He wasn't true to his girlfriend, but he also wasn't true to himself. Mm -hmm. Second thing, once you fail, just keep trying. Because a lot of times we fail at things and we think that's it. Like we don't have to do, like, oh, this is over for me. I fell, this is over, it's no trying again. But sometimes you just have to keep trying. Like for him, he tried with the test because they all had to ha pass a test, kind of like an ACT test to um, move on out and mm -hmm. graduate. So he didn't pass it the first, what, three times? Yeah. It was like three times he didn't pass <laughs> But he kept saying, I'm gonna take it again. <laughs> right, I didn't pass like, it, but I'm gonna take it again. And he was so adamant about it. <laughs> so like he kept trying and when he did pass it, that third or fourth time or fifth time, it was too many times. But anyway, that whatever time it was, he passed and did well better than everyone else in the and class. And you know what I'm gonna say with that? What's that? You know, with him, with him keep trying to take that test over and over again, his dad kept, kept 
counted him down. Like his dad was like, you know, why did I even have you? Yeah, his or dad you? was saying some rude stuff. It, he really was. But you know what? He did not let that get him mm -mm. down. So you know, <laughs> with everything that you got going on, there's going to always be somebody negative trying to put you down or say things about you. But you have to keep pushing no matter what. Right. You do. And okay, third third topic. I want to share this with you as okay. well. It's never too late to pursue what you want to pursue. And that's exactly what Kevin and everybody in his class did. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say on that? Because you do got some people who think it's too late for them to go back to school, to mm -hmm. get the GED, or to get a, uh, their diploma. Right. What do you think? So to our viewers watching, if you're in your 70s, you're in your 30s, you could be in your 90s, and if you want to go back to school or whatever you want to do, if it's not even in school, you can pursue whatever you want to pursue. It's never too late. You know, a lot of times we tell ourselves, oh, I can't do this anymore because I'm too old, or I, I shouldn't do this anymore because I have kids. No, it's never too late because this life is yours. And me and you talked about this earlier. We all have 24 hours. What I do with my 24 hours is what I decide to do with my 24 hours. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. What you decide to do for your 24 hours is what you decide to do. Mind you, I would like to sleep at least eight hours of those 24 hours. But after those eight hours, it, what we decide to do with our hours is what we decide to do. What are your thoughts on it? I actually think the movie overall was fantastic. I actually want to go see it again, but it was some things I took away that, to pinpoint off what I was talking about earlier about, you know, not letting people get you down because so many people go through those things in life. Yes. Because it can be your own family, like your parents, Thank your you cousins, for or that. aunts. Your own family can be the ones that deter you away from what you're trying to pursue because they don't know what they want to do. Exactly. So neg that negative energy, you don't need that negative energy. I think we talked about this on the show before. You don't need any of that negative energy for our viewers because like you said, the family can be the very ones that hurt you the most. Oh, we process. did talk about too, like when people cross and pass, you never know no. who that person going to be. So in the movie, Tyler, not Tyler, I'm thinking of Tyler, <laughs> Tyler Perry. Oh, I think goodness. Tyler Perry may call me later to be in one of his he movies. Might. Tyler, please call. We're waiting on you. We asked for you two weeks ago. Where you at? <laughs> so Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish was at a light, at, at a stoplight. And Kevin and Tiffany had got into it about something. I'm not going to give it away. I know what they got into it about, but I'm not going to give it away. And so Kevin had was end up going to the school, and he seen Tiffany there. Now, remind you, he would just argue with Tiffany at mm -hmm. the light, not realizing that he was that she, she was, was a high school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? She still gave him a chance. And, and thank you for saying that, because for our teachers, our professors, and um, teachers in high school as well, thank you for being, for those who care about their students, thank you for pushing us to be the best that we can be. What do you think about teachers who do that? I think it's very important to have instructors who are willing to do that. And she was, she was the character that promoted that. I would say, you know, if you have your professor who's pushing you, I do feel like it has like a positive impact on your life because some professors or teachers or, you know, mentors, they see things in us that we don't see ourselves. So, you know, if they can just get that out of us, like that's a good impact. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you do got some teachers who say they probably help you or even mentor who's going to help you, but they, they don't, don't. They don't help you. But look, hey, you helping me by keep pushing because I know you're not keeping your word, but I'm going to still keep pushing regardless. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody's going to have to realize. Sometimes you got to have that self-motivation you in do. yourself and don't depend on no one you else do. to push you. Because it it's not about anyone else. It's about you at the end of the day. It's always about you. And remember that. Because this, I'm telling you, this movie just highlighted so many moments. It's, it's just like, when I got there, I didn't think I was going to experience any of that. Because, you know, it's Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish. I'm like, they're going to be crazy. Like, this is going to be a crazy mess. But it was a crazy good mess because it had that moral behind the stories. It did. And, you know, even though, like, who else went to see it? I hope they got some of the same morals that we got out of it, mm -hmm. or at least got something out of that movie, because just don't go and watch it, but look at the meaning behind that movie. Oh, look, and let me mention this, too. You know how Kevin went to the chicken shack or whatever to get his job? <laughs> Kevin went to the chicken shack. However, he got that job. At first, he didn't want to do it, but he did it, and he did the best he could he do. He did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. So that kind of goes back to our episode one of this season where we're talking about jobs. You know, it, whatever job you have, do it to the best of your ability because it doesn't matter where you work, it's how hard you work. And when you work hard and you put that on a resume and you take that somewhere where people can see that resume and people can back you up and say, hey, he was a hard worker. That's, that's the, I guess, the, the length that it can go. The best thing 
that could happen, I guess, is what I'm trying and to you say. you know what, dude? He didn't want to be at that chicken place, but no. you know, he worked hard at it. I wouldn't have it. either, because that man was just creepy. He was just <laughs> smiling like, this is the best chicken ever. So, but, you know, he did what he had to do. And when his girlfriend found out that he was working there, surprisingly, she didn't judge him, so. It was a good movie good overall. Movie. If yep. you haven't seen it, you should go see yep. it. Well, we must take a commercial break, but coming up, we'll have ABC coordinator Angela Piquico, and later we will have two-time cancer survivor Tammy Thrash. So stay tuned. You're watching SKP. You can help support Austin P students who don't have enough to eat by donating to the Save Our Students Food Pantry. The Save Our Students Food Pantry is looking for soup, pasta, canned meat, canned beans, peanut butter, and fruit. You can drop off your donations at the food pantry on Home Avenue. It's open Tuesdays through Friday, 8.30 until 4. For more information, call 221-1620. 221-1620. A campus reminder from Austin P. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. I'm from Clarksville, Tennessee. Fort Knox, Kentucky. Jackson, Tennessee. Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Memphis, Tennessee. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Little Rock, Arkansas. St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Gaffney, South Carolina. Seattle, Washington. Jeremy, Haiti. I'm from Tres Pontes, Brazil. Chicago, Illinois. Hawaii. Phoenix, Arizona. Roselton, Georgia. From Modesto, California. I want to be a neonatal nurse. An athletic trainer and accountant. Playing the NFL. Interior designer. Physical therapist. Law enforcement officer. Ultrasound technician. Social worker. Physician. Politician. Psychologist. A CPA. Yes, for sure. Worker. Nurse practitioner. Physical therapist. Restaurant owner. A politician. Start my own business. Veterinarian. Elementary school teacher. The NBA player. Cardiovascular surgeon. Anesthesiologist. Businesswoman in Nashville. Social worker. In Miami, Florida. Politician in Washington, D.C. Colorado. In Orlando, Florida. Houston, Texas. In Chattanooga. Memphis, Tennessee. Seattle, Washington. In Nashville, Tennessee. San Diego, California. Nashville, Tennessee. New York City, New York. San Diego, California. Atlanta, Georgia. Nashville. Los Angeles, California. New York, New York. Memphis, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Orlando, Florida. Los Angeles, California. Baltimore, Maryland. Clarksville, Tennessee. Carolina Beach, Carolina. Philadelphia. St. Louis, Missouri. Clarksville, Tennessee. I'm your host, Corinne Harris, alongside with my co-host, Stephen Christopher Alexander. <laughs> Our first guest today is very knowledgeable in her area of work. Being the coordinator at ABC has given her the opportunity to work with some amazing people. Here to talk about her experience is Angela Pikelko. Okay. How are you? <laughs> we tried to pronounce it right. Did we, are we doing okay with it? You're doing okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you We're for good. coming today. <laughs> so you, can you tell us a little bit about ABC? Absolutely. Can I just say, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really appreciate this. Being October, you know, it's just the month where we start to really encourage everyone to be aware of their bodies and themselves. And so this is really helpful just to, to remind people that, that it's time to, to pay attention to yourself and do your breast self exam. Um, so thank you so much. This is just, it can help a lot of people. So the ABC program, it's a 16-week program at the YMCA, 
And one of the best things about this program is that it is absolutely free to mm -hmm. breast cancer survivors. And the most visible part of the program is the exercise part. Mm -hmm. But we do try to affect these survivors spirit, mind, and body. So the exercise is obviously the body part of it. Uh -huh. So these ladies meet twice a week mm -hmm. with a certified pink ribbon trainer. Mm -hmm. And they meet in small groups. They're usually um, anywhere from five to 10 ladies at a time will meet together and they will do exercise classes. And if you can imagine, you know, going through different types of surgeries, because depending on your diagnosis and how severe the cancer is, there might be more invasive surgeries to remove the cancer. So right. there are some physical limitations that these ladies have. So our pink ribbon certified pink ribbon trainers are trained in and very knowledgeable in the different limitations that these ladies might have mm -hmm. because it's important to exercise, but more importantly than that, it's important to exercise safely. safely. Right. My next so, question, mm -hmm. I want to know, how do you guys reach out to these cancer patients? Like, how do they know to come to you all? You know, um, most of our ladies come to us from doctor referrals. So we do our best to get the word out to doctors. But if you can imagine how much chaos is going in, going on in someone's mind when they're going through um, surgeries and radiation and chemo and whatnot, um, there's a lot of chaos in their world. So we don't necessarily expect them to take a look at our flyer and remember a couple of months down the road to give us a call. So that doesn't always happen. but. So what we try to do because of that is word of mouth is really important. Um, so just letting everyone know that we exist. And then we just recently started going to hair salons and beauty salons to try to get the word out there. Mm -hmm. uh, just letting people know in churches, churches is a great place, women's groups and whatnot. So how has working with cancer survivors impacted your life? It's taught me a deeper appreciation for life. Um, kind of what you guys were saying in your earlier segment, you know, live life to your fullest, mm -hmm. live life for yourself. And I've, I've always, you know, thought about what's next, what's next, but it's really important to enjoy your day and enjoy your moment. And mm -hmm. how do you guys teach that to the ladies that are there? We some, do. I know some ladies have a hard time mm -hmm. understanding that because they think I yeah. have cancer, yeah. you know, I can't do anything else, but how yeah. do you instill that motivation into them? Part of our program is small group discussions. And these, again, five to 10 ladies will meet together. And the discussion is led by a trained facilitator. And they talk about life. And it's not always cancer. They talk about, you know, they, they talk about how their lives have been impacted by cancer. They talk about um, just their relationships, personal, professional. Um, and it's a great way for these ladies to have someone to talk to who understands where they've been and what they're going through. So, so my next, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have so many questions because yes. this is a, just an important topic. So why is this program important for the Clarksville community and how has it impacted the community? Part of the mission of the YMCA is to strengthen community through spirit, mind, and body. And that's how we try to impact the community with this program is helping these ladies get back and finding their new normal because it's not going to be the same normal as they had before their diagnosis right. uh, but they find their new normal and they get back to living their lives and being productive in their lives and in society and in the community and my next question to you is do you guys get men that come in a lot of people think cancer patients mm -hmm. are all just women, but men have Yeah, it you know, that's an interesting question. So I said to, I'm also one of the group fitness instructors at the Y, and I said to my cycle class the other day, I said, it's October, remember to do your breast self exams. And I looked over and I said, and even you men, and they looked at me and said, what? We've never had a gentleman request to be in the program. Mm -hmm. um, but if they did, I'm sure that, that we would welcome them because it's not something that affects just women. And now obviously at a smaller percentage, a smaller, smaller rate of occurrence, but sure, yeah. And Definitely. how can men check? Can men check the same way as women? Like how does that work? Yeah, I mean, there, if, uh, and especially if you go to the Susan G. Komen website, there are instructions on how to do breast self exams. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't think that there's any difference in the way a man does it versus okay. a woman. Okay. Just a little less tissue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you now know. there are upcoming events 
that mm -hmm. ABC program is hosting. Mm -hmm. I know you have the 5K. That's coming. Yeah, Can you we're tell super us more excited about, about that? that. Yeah, so uh, we have had so much wonderful support from APSU. So mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that that y'all have done. And so there's the 5K coming up on October 20th. The race starts at 9 a.m. And there is registration that can be done online. Um, and it's going to be just here at APSU. The proceeds from that they get from that race go to the After Breast Cancer Program. We also have an event coming up. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year. It has to happen in October. So mm -hmm. it's Thursday, October the 18th. It is a luncheon. And it is... Um, uh, called Tickle Me Pink. And mm -hmm. so if you're interested in attending, it's $40 for a ticket, and we are still looking for sponsors. So that'd be great. It would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to bring people out, because yeah. I know some people who, that's a lot of people who have cancer. They're afraid mm -hmm. to talk about it. Yep. So we'll have to, I'll have to bring them to you and refer them to you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and that's just the best way to do it is just to spread it word of mouth. And how would you say ABC has impacted cancer patients? Like how how has it impacted them to where they can mm -hmm. talk about this? I want to know right. more about that as well. Right. So I think that it, this is just a great way for cancer survivors to come to each other, come together with each other and get their lives back on track. It's something that um, w when they call me and they ask me about the program, they, they say, this is exactly what I need. This is, I mean, this, is, this is exactly what I need. I need to be able to talk to people who get it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's really challenging for them is that they don't have, you know, they might have people who love them and support them all over the place, but not everyone gets it. Yeah. yeah. Like, survivors yeah. get it because you don't know what it feels like yeah. until you've mm -hmm. been through the process yeah. right yeah. so how do you think survivors find strength in the program mm -hmm. they find strength mentally and physically right so we talked about that so uh, there's obviously that physical aspect uh, you know uh, chemotherapy and radiation can affect your um, bone density and that's something that ladies really have to you know take pay into consideration attention. and pay attention to as they get older. Yeah. So they build strength physically. We work on, you know, we do a lot of weight bearing exercises and we also, you know, help them grow spiritually and get stronger spiritually. Well, Miss well, Angela, we thank you for coming to the show. Thanks we must so much for having me. take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we'll have Miss Tammy Thrash here to talk about her story. So stay tuned, you're watching SKP. You can help support Austin P. students who don't have enough to eat by donating to the Save Our Students Food Pantry. The Save Our Students Food Pantry is looking for soup, pasta, canned meat, canned beans, peanut butter, and fruit. You can drop off your donations at the food pantry on Home Avenue. It's open Tuesdays through Friday, 8.30 until 4. For more information, call 221-1620. A campus reminder from Austin P. Welcome back. I'm your host, Stephen Alexander, alongside with my co-host, Kareen Harris. Our guest today is a pink ribbon trainer for ABC. She is also a breast, ovarian, and skin cancer survivor. Ms. Tammy Thrash is here to tell us about her story and give cancer patients advice on how to be, how to let cancer not take over them. How are you, Ms. Tammy? I'm very well, thank Good. you very much. So Ms. Tammy, you refer to yourself as a two-time cancer survivor. Can you tell us why that is? 
Well, um, I was diagnosed one time with breast cancer in the breast and went through all the treatment, surgery and everything else. And then uh, about two years later, it had gone to my ovary. So everything all over again, cancer, I mean, um, surgery, treatment, losing the hair and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm proud to say I'm a two time survivor. How did you deal with that? Because that has to hurt internally. How did you push through that? Well, I think it helps to have God in your life. That's my personal opinion. Um, also knowing you need to push on for your children and your husband and your family. Um, and I, I know that you, it's devastating when you hear the news. That's not something you ever think is you're going to hear. So um, you just have to basically find the sense of humor in everything because it is a whirlwind. And you just have to keep the hope and you know, prayers also help, you know. It's easy to say have hope, but it, it's really meaningful to, to continue to tell yourself, this is hopeful, I can do this. Right, mm -hmm. and how has ABC helped you personally? Well, ABC is, I feel like it's my baby because <laughs> I went through the program. Um, I loved it. It helped me find other survivors who had been through the same things I had. Um, and it, it was just good to have that connection to other people. So, because you, you don't want to burden your family and friends if, you know, you don't dwell on it all the time, but sometimes you might have fears mm -hmm. and questions. So it was nice to find the other survivors that you can bounce things off of. And um, you know, I, I liked it so much that I became a certified pink ribbon trainer myself. So now I'm able to help the other ladies. And many through. times there are people who don't know what to say to someone who has been diagnosed with, cam with the cancer. So what are your right. thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, when people hear um, that someone has cancer, you want to try to connect to them, obviously. We all want to have that connection and you don't know what to say. So I always say to people, just have some empathy and say, I'm sorry this is happening to you, but just remember that this is something that is treatable. It's not a death sentence. Um, and I, I would like to say that other survivors joke that the last thing we want to hear is, oh, my aunt had it and she died last year. You know, that's, that's definitely not something we want to hear. So right. just trying to keep it positive. You and know? how can family members, I want to know, how can family members be the best support? Well, family members or friends or acquaintances, the best way to support for one, pray for that person, um, and just really be sincere in offering your help. Say, I want to help you, what can I do? And, and really try to find a way, something that you can do, cook for that person, um, take the kids, take someone to a doctor's appointment. It can be anything, the least little thing is just is so helpful and uplifting to someone, or just go and sit with them, you know, and talk. What kind of advice would you offer someone who may be newly diagnosed with cancer? Well, I think, again, I would say remain hopeful, see the humor in things, and, and do realize that it is not a death sentence. It's something that's totally curable. It's something that is not fun by any means, but you can get through it. And I think that it's important to know that it's okay to ask for help and accept help when mm -hmm. people are offering it to you. Well, Miss Tammy, we thank you so much for coming to the show. Sure. Sorry we ran out of time. We'd oh, love to okay. talk more. Thanks for having <laughs> us. I really appreciate it. So for you guys watching, thanks for tuning in today. We talked about some amazing stuff. And stay tuned with us for next week's episode. We will see you next Thursday with more news and entertainment. So remember to tune in on Thursdays at 3 o'clock p.m. to catch us live on CBE Channel 9, Spectrum 192, <laughs> and Verse 99 in Middle Tennessee. So you can catch us everywhere, right? You can catch us everywhere. We're, we're going to be national soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we must wrap up. Thanks for watching again. And again, stay tuned with us for next week. See you next time. Have a good week.